Well, gang, we are just preparing our last minute setups here for our Good Friday service tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. We would love it very much if you would come and, and join us to enjoy the Lord as we remember that once for all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we talk about sacrifice and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, although it was fully enacted on Good Friday, it was something the Lord Jesus had been preparing for his whole life. His whole purpose when he stood before Pilate was he said, I've, I've come to bear witness to the truth. My, my whole life I've been bearing witness to the fact of the truthfulness of who I am and what I'm here to do and who God is and the new kingdom of God that's breaking into the world. And the culmination of that, of course, is in the cross of Christ. And of course, that is the culmination of his sacrifice. The thing about that sacrifice is that it is so clearly portrayed in the Last Supper. And today is a day that we call Monday Thursday, not Monday, Monday. And it's the day that Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. He did that, and it's recorded in the Gospels, and in particular, the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. Monday is a shortened form of the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment. And this day in traditional evangelicalism has been referred to as Monday Thursday, or the day of the new commandment. That at the communion table, what we think of as a communion table, which looks back to remember Christ, we often call it the Lord's table. Uh, we see it in the Bible as referred to as the Last Supper. You've heard me refer to it more than once as the Last Passover, because truly it was the last time that Christians were commanded to look back at the passing over of the angel of death while the people of God were in captive in, in Egypt and in using that uh, last of the great plagues, it caused Pharaoh to in fact let Moses' people go. And people, the people of God for centuries looked back and remembered that passing over as a precursor to the actual passing over of the actual Lamb of God who actually takes away the sin of the world when his blood is shed and covers us the way the blood of the animal sacrifices covered those homes so the angel of death passed over. Now God in Christ, as we have trusted and surrendered our lives to him, the wrath of God passes over us because as it were, we're covered in, covered over with the blood of our Lord. And at that very significant meal, Jesus gives a new commandment to his people. A commandment that, although it is new, sounds very similar to the old one. The heart of the old covenant commandment for God's people was to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. See if you can pick out the newness here as I read for you John chapter 13 and beginning at verse 31. Jesus says, when he had gone out, excuse me, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You will seek me. Just as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, quote, where I am going, you cannot come. He's on his way to the cross. He's going to fulfill the very purpose of his being born and his, his, his coming into the world. And so he says in verse 34, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, by this loving one another like I've loved you, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love, and I'd suggest this kind of love for one another. And you've heard me say before, friends, that it's new because it's a new standard. 
it's not love one another like we love ourselves. It's like this, like the way I love myself, that's how I should love you. That's a pretty high level of love. But he's saying the way I have loved you, that's how you're to love one another. Friends, nobody ever loved like Jesus. Nobody ever loves like Jesus. And so it's new. Because now it's not as good as I love myself. It's the way Jesus, the sinless, sacrificial Lamb of God, has laid down his life for a sinner like me. That's new, because that's a higher standard. But see, there's not only a higher standard, it's this high calling that comes with a higher, if you will, a enabling to actually do this. He's going to breathe on his disciples in the first chapter of the book of Acts to receive the Holy Spirit. Or at least the Holy Spirit's going to come upon them. The promise is given there and it comes upon them in the second chapter of the book of Acts. And they are now enabled and equipped as we are. Where the Spirit of God is, they are his, the Bible tells us. We are therefore enabled to actually love like this. You know, Monday, Thursday back in Thunder Bay, in my hometown. Jim Carson, the brother of the well-known theologian, D.A. Carson. Jim Carson, who ministered with us there at O'Connor Economy Church out in, uh, in the Thunder Bay area. Jim used to have a Tenenbre service. I think in French he pronounced it Tenabra. And it literally means the coming darkness. And it was a service that what you did was Folks set up tables in the shape of a cross. And there was a candle at each seat. And at the beginning of the service, all the candles were lit. And we would read through the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we got closer and closer and closer to the coming darkness. You remember when Jesus gave up his spirit, it said that this dark cloud came over the sky. And the closer we got to that part of the reading. The darker it got, I would do a reading, someone else would do a reading, someone else would do a reading, whoever Jim had, Pastor Jim Carson had pulled together there. And as you read, you would snuff out your candle. At the end of this reading, you'd snuff out your candle. And it was very powerful, very emotional to think that Jesus had sent his face a flint focused on the cross. Nothing was going to keep him from getting there. Because he was going to show us an example that we might follow in his steps. As 1 Peter 2 reminds us. The example of his sacrificial giving of himself. Certainly for our salvation to pay all of the price for all of our sins. For all of God's people for all time. But then calling us. To not act as one another's saviors. We can't and we don't need to. He's done that efficiently and sufficiently. All that was required, he paid sufficiently and efficiently. He actually saved us, didn't just make it available. But then that self giving example that he shows this is how you love one another like I've loved you sacrificially, not just conveniently in what's needed, not just what I feel like giving, in what's required, not just what I'm prepared to give, all, to give that I have left over, to give at the deepest level of what we need. Friends, that's convicting for me. And I hope you take, it, take the time to be convicted yourself. And I hope you'll join us here in this auditorium at Downsview Baptist Church tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock as we seek to ask God to remind us of what Christ did for us, we will have a communion service. We have the communion uh, table set. And we will do so because the Bible tells us that as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And until he comes, he wants us and calls us on this Monday, Thursday, to love one another sacrificially just as he has loved us. It's a high calling. It's an impossible calling of ourselves, but being enabled by the ministry of the Spirit, we can indeed live that way to the honor and glory 
of the one who has loved us and given himself up for us. I hope we'll see you tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock here at Downsview. All right, friends, see you then.